So, we've got a number one deluxe meal. Is there anything else I can get you? Yeah, I'd also like a good night's sleep. Maybe something like the I didn't struggle all night with my uncomfortable CPAP mask. Sir, I think what you're looking for is Inspire. It's an implant that works inside your body to treat sleep apnea without a CPAP. Come on. He sounds angry. Inspire, sleep apnea innovation. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you. And review important safety information at InspireSleep.com. And good evening. This is Motek on Money. I'm Frank Motek, and we're doing it live right here weeknights in our new 5 o'clock hour here in Los Angeles. Motek on Money, five nights a week for you, live on the air here in 790 KBC, streaming live online worldwide at KBC.com, and the on-demand Motek on Money podcast for you at KBC.com, Apple iTunes, all your favorite podcast platforms, and we're on the socials, too, at Frank Motek on X, formerly known as Twitter and Instagram, and a little bit on threads, too. Well, stocks ended higher today ahead of the big Fed announcement tomorrow with the Dow recording 12th, 12th day of gains while investors are taking in the big tech company earnings after the closing bell and awaiting the Fed's interest rate decision tomorrow. It's widely expected the Fed will be hiking short-term interest rates by another quarter percentage point. A lot happening in the news today. Uh, it's a, The hot labor summer continues. Big news on the labor front with UPS reaching a tentative deal with its 340,000-person Union, the Teamsters, potentially averting a strike that threatened to disrupt package deliveries for millions of businesses and households nationwide. sag Aftrans and the WGA continue to hit the picket lines in front of the studios here in Hollywood. Hollywood basically still shut down as both of those strikes continue. Kaiser Permanente, meanwhile, health care workers are set to hit the picket lines tomorrow morning. This coming as workers have been without contracts, which expired three months ago. We'll continue to follow that big story. In fact, I'll talk about it, and I'll talk about it tonight with Mark Wilbur, one of the giants here on the business scene. Mark Wilbur, the chairman of Employers Group, former chairman of the Los Angeles County Business Federation, L.A. BizFed, and former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business. What's the latest on real estate? We'll get an update tonight from a giant in the Beverly Hills real estate business, luxury real estate agent extraordinaire Aaron Kerman. The star of the TV show Listing Impossible will be joining me live later this hour to talk about What's happening on the real estate scene? As far as the stock market goes, we see the Dow ended up 27 points. And yes, 12 winners in a row now. The S&P 500 of 13. The Nasdaq finished up 86 points. After the closing bell, a lot of news as well here with Microsoft and Visa coming in uh, with earnings. Uh, we saw that uh, Coca-Cola and Boeing, also among those Dow components presenting their numbers uh, tomorrow. We'll be watching for that. Another uh, big story in the uh, banking space. Uh, we see a major announcement here after the closing bell today. PacWest Bank Corp stock up more than 38% in after hours trading after the company said it agreed to be acquired by Bank of California. This is an all stock merger backed by two private equity firms. The merger comes as PacWest looks to put a tough uh, time behind it. Under the terms of the deal, PacWest stockholders will receive 0.657 shares of Bank of California common stock. And it looks like this new combined bank will be based in Beverly Hills. Bank of California CEO Gerald Wolf will retain the same role at the combined company. That is big in the banking news. And uh, consumers reporting uh, there are problems at J.P. Morgan Chase today, the largest bank in the U.S. Looks like Zelle and uh, some other issues there at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase today with uh, direct deposits and shifting money around um, we're looking to see if that situation has been resolved, but it looks like uh, some pr pretty serious issues today at J.P. Morgan Chase, especially if you're trying to send some money via Zelle. Right now, let's bring in on the markets, the economy, and the whole works tonight. Joining us live now is E.J. Antoni, public finance economist at the Heritage Foundation, keeping an eye on what the Fed might do tomorrow, Bidenomics, uh, and the whole works. Uh, E.J., thank you very much for coming to the line here. Certainly a lot going on here uh, in Hollywood on the labor front. We have the Fed meeting tomorrow. We have the stock market uh, rally here underway. And still a lot of concerns about uh, where this economy is heading, where inflation is heading. Give us your assessment of things here at the moment. Well, I actually wrote back in, I believe it was October, uh, sometime in the fall of last year, about how high periods of inflation are a key ingredient with labor unrest. And that's exactly what we have seen multiple times this year. You know, uh, these labor unions essentially negotiate deals believing that the dollar is going to maintain its purchasing power. And when it doesn't, 
that has a catastrophic result on workers' earnings, not just union workers, all workers in general. Uh, Just last month, for example, the average American worker was paying an inflation tax, effectively, of $4.55 an hour. That basically has doubled the effective federal income tax rate, again, on the on the average American worker. I mean, that's really devastating for a lot of people. But, you know, it, it does uh, it does, I think, illustrate that fundamental reality that inflation is a tax and it's a key part of Bidenomics. It's how the federal government has been funding all of these uh, allegedly unfunded government expenditures. On the live with E.J. Antoni, public finance economist at the Heritage Foundation, And let me ask you this, as mortgage rates um, have been, uh, well, coming off a 20-year high uh, last year, but still relatively high, and of course, uh, you have interest rates, especially credit card interest rates, pretty much at uh, record highs here. That's impacting consumers in a very big way. Every time I see a credit card bill with Delaware on it, I think of uh, President Biden, who's, uh, of course, had represented Delaware in the Senate. What about the uh, impact this is having uh, on the consumer, these uh, record high um, credit card interest rates? Well, it's it's no secret that Joe Biden for years uh, changed uh, a lot of pieces of legislation in order to create more favorable laws for those credit card companies. And that has resulted uh, in in an incredible loss of protection to the American consumer. And one of the great ironies is that all of those changes were made in the name of protecting the American consumer. But what they actually did was increase the power of existing credit card companies by not allowing new entrants into the market. In other words, those regulations protected the very companies that they were were allegedly going to go after and failed to protect the American people. And, And those American people are now in a situation where they are racking up credit card debt at, at record interest levels in order to pay for necessities. There are companies now that have been founded just within the last year or two to help people pay for groceries on installments. It's not yachts and caviar that are driving up these credit card balances for the vast majority of Americans. No, it's milk and bread. That is an excellent point. And it should also be noted the uh, last time we saw inflation like this uh, 40 years ago, a credit card interest was deductible and that changed uh, back in the 80s and and uh, whether uh, senator biden had anything to do with it um you could probably tell me uh you know i actually don't remember the vote the vote count on that one uh but what i do know is that joe biden has done a lot of things to, again to protect those same credit card companies he's been involved with a lot of legislation that altered the regulations again this was all done allegedly to protect American consumers. But instead, what it did was create such heavy regulatory burdens that only very large companies have the profit margins in order to, to actually shoulder those those burdens. And so if you want to take a, a small company, maybe a small savings and loan uh, or a small regional bank, let's say, and you want to create a credit card arm of that institution, you simply can't because the regulatory costs are so high. That's a very interesting point. And speaking of the banks, uh, we see another uh, bank merger today, uh, this one involving uh, a couple of California banks uh, with PacWest and uh, Bank of California uh, coming together here uh, following all of the turmoil we saw in the regional banks uh, earlier this year. Uh, give us your assessment of what's going on with the banks here at the moment. And then today, J.P. Morgan Chase having an issue with with um, with getting uh, money to people and so forth uh, through their Zelle uh, platform and apparently um, – uh, through the uh, the bank branches, somebody just uh, texted me uh, and said their systems have been down since 10 o'clock uh, this morning. Uh, what about the banks here? Uh, you know, I'm very worried about the banking sector in general. Several of the large banks are actually very well positioned. Uh, ones like J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, they actually have relatively clean balance sheets. Bank of America is probably the one exception. Their balance sheet does not look very good right now. That's very troubling. Uh, I'd be concerned if, if I was doing business with with Bank of America. However, at the same time, uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that the Fed, the Treasury, the FDIC has basically taken the position that if anyone messes up badly enough, 
they're going to bail them out. That's exactly what we saw with with SVB, with Signature Bank, uh, and and several others. So this incredible mess that was created by the Fed, by the Treasury, where they they essentially mandated these banks take on a tremendous amount of what we call interest rate risk. Uh, that has that has borne its rotten fruit, and unfortunately, the American taxpayer is picking up the tab here for it. Getting finally some uh, reporting from the AP on what's going on at Chase. Uh, they say an unexplained outage at Chase led to interruptions for users of the Zelle payment network who took to social media to complain. Zelle said on Twitter that its network is now functioning normally and pointed a finger at Chase, saying the bank was experiencing trouble with payment processing. Chase issued a statement noting that it's working to restore full service to account transfer Zelle payments and bill payments, but offered no details regarding the cause of the service outage or its expected duration. According to Down Detector, that's the site that collects user outage reports, both services experience service problems starting around 10 o'clock back east, and the problem remained unresolved at last check. So uh, we are keeping an eye on what's going on there. You mentioned B of A, and we'll certainly uh, check with those folks. Uh, What do you see happening at, at Bank of America? Uh, you know, unfortunately, Bank of America, along with a whole host of regional banks, have a lot of assets on their books, which, if they need to be sold today, are going to be sold at a loss. And so what all of these banks are, are hoping is that they don't have to sell these assets, that they're mostly bonds, for example, or other securities. They need to allow them to mature. And because upon maturity, the holder of that uh, security, whether it's a bond or a, a note or a bill, uh, then gets paid. But the problem is the interest rate on these things is so low and that because interest rates have climbed, the relationship of the price and the interest rate move in different directions. So as rates go up, the price of these old bonds has just just tanked, and we can expect the Fed is going to raise interest rates again this week. And what that's going to do is decrease the value of those bonds even more. So those uh, losses that these banks have on their balance sheets are going to get even worse. And so they are all hoping and praying they don't have to sell those bonds until maturity. On the live with EJ, EJ Antoni, public finance economist at the Heritage Foundation. Give us your uh, your grade of, of Bidenomics and um, what do you think is going to happen this week after the Fed, uh, widely expected, will raise uh, tomorrow and we'll get that statement on the economy and then the assessment from the Fed chairman will hold a full-blown news conference and the whole works and and uh, the outlook for uh, for this economy. Will it be a soft landing, hard landing, no landing? Uh, what's your assessment here? Well, there's no way you get a soft landing out of this. We, we are heading uh, to a recession. We're heading quite quickly, actually. The latest data uh, is pointing to about December for, for the start of that. You know, Now, again, those data change on a pretty regular basis. Uh, however, it's been in a relatively narrow window, right? It, it, it started out as, uh, as, I think, somewhere around August, and then it was pushed all the way back to April or May, and, and now we're back to Uh, a little closer to the middle in in December. So, look, you can't spend, borrow, and print trillions upon trillions of dollars and not expect any negative consequences. And for the life of me, I just don't know when we forgot that. And so we are going to have a recession. We are going to have that hard landing, and there's just no way out of it. The bill is going to come due. In in terms of Bidenomics, uh, I, I give Biden an A for fundamentally changing the trajectory of the American economy, like he said he was going to do. Uh, unfortunately, he changed it for the worse, and so Bidenomics as a whole gets a grade of an F. Uh, what does Bidenomics mean? It means falling real wages. Uh, it means industrial production and capacity falling. It means more people out of the labor force and on disability. Uh, it means more people on welfare without work requirements so that we are expanding government and we are shrinking the private sector. It means homes are increasingly unaffordable. The the uh, price, the monthly mortgage payment of a median priced home today is ni- about 98% higher than it was when Biden took office. So if you're going to buy a median priced home today, you are spending tw- about $12,000 a year more for the exact same house. And you're going to do that year after year for 30 years. That's Bidenomics. And, of course, labor changing quite a bit, uh, and no conversation would be complete these days without uh, having to ask you about AI and its impact on on labor and the economy. Um, I'm sure you guys there at the uh, the Heritage Foundation have taken a close look at that and its uh, potential impact. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on AI impacting things here at the moment? You know, I find it amazing that all of the people 
who they told the the coal miners, for example, oh, just go learn to code when your when your job gets eliminated. You know, now we finally have a technology that is not eliminating blue collar jobs, but is eliminating white collar jobs. It can eliminate uh, journalists. It can eliminate people who do coding for. For a limited time, Sweet Deals is offering qualified listeners the vacation of a lifetime. An all-inclusive five-day, four-night stay in a suite for just two adults and up to two children in Cancun, Mexico for just $299. This opportunity is valued at more than $2,600. That's right, a $2,600 vacation for $299 and it's all-inclusive, meaning all your food and drinks are included. Attendance is required at a presentation for vacation club ownership, but who cares? There's no purchase necessary. And you have a 30-day money-back guarantee if you change your mind. Do not miss this exclusive luxury vacation offer from SweetDeals.com. $299 for four nights at an all-inclusive resort in beautiful Cancun, Mexico. Go to SweetDeals.com right now and snag this once-in-a-lifetime offer. That's SweetDeals.com. Example. Uh, and now all of a sudden there are there are calls to regulate it and to slow it down. And that's a bunch of hogwash. These these uh, technological advancements always end up creating more jobs than they eliminate. I think AI is is a welcomed invention, uh, but at the same time we want to recognize the fact that its name is a bit of a misnomer. It is not artificial intelligence. It's just like any other computer program. It does what the programmer programs it to do, which is why, for example, you have concerns about bias in AI, because it can be programmed to be biased. And so if, if we're going to have any, any calls for, uh, for regulation, for example, uh, it, you know, it shouldn't be on whether or not we should be allowed to implement AI or, or use it in different scenarios, but simply that if it's going to be used for public purposes, that it needs to be truly nonpartisan. And let me ask you this. Um, it's so going to be back to the coal mines uh, for, for a lot of folks then. And, and uh, speaking of energy, what about uh, energy policy, which, of course, has also changed uh, under this administration? You know, 100 years ago, by the way, California accounted for 25 percent of global oil production, which is quite remarkable uh, when you look at the Getty Center and go by uh, where Occidental Petroleum used to be headquartered uh, in Westwood and go to, uh, drive down Doheny uh, Drive. You're reminded of, of the impact uh, that the oil industry has had certainly on Southern California and and built up uh, this entire region. Uh, what about uh, how you see energy policy uh, moving forward? Well, this administration has has declared war on American energy on clean dem, on clean reliable domestic energy. That's coal. That's oil. That's natural gas. That's nuclear. Even hydro. This administration is hell bent on implementing unproven and unreliable technologies in the solar and wind sphere. You know, people don't realize every single electric car receives tens of thousands of dollars of subsidies, and yet they still cannot hold a candle to their gasoline counterpart. And as proof of that, you need look no further than the fact that these things are piling up on dealership lots because people just don't want them. And again, that's with tens of thousands of dollars in subsidies for every single vehicle. They're not just subsidized when the consumer buys them and you get a tax credit. They're subsidized uh, when the dealer sells them. They're subsidized when they're built at the factory. And all of the component parts get subsidies as well. And yet Americans still don't want them. But that's just that's just one example. When you're talking about uh, things like gas stoves or a gasoline-powered lawn equipment, for example, we run into the the exact same thing. Uh, the, the government, whether it's the federal government or out in California, are trying to force American consumers to stop using products that they love, products that have drastically improved people's lives, and to abandon them and replace them with things that are not only unreliable but are much more controllable by bureaucrats. And we also see the exact same thing uh, when it comes to generating the electricity itself. Look at how many areas of the country, California especially, are subject to things like brownouts and blackouts because they disproportionately rely on unreliable sources of electricity generation. Again, namely solar and wind. E.J. Antoni, public finance economist at the Heritage Foundation. You've given us a lot to think about tonight. Look forward to your social media postings and your work there at the Heritage Foundation. Thank you very much for joining us live here this evening. 
Oh, no, thank you for having me. Fantastic. Look forward to staying in touch with you. Again, that's E.J. Antoni with the Heritage Foundation. Friends, don't give in to that constant joint pain. Take control. Take back your quality of life today with help from QC Kinetics. It's Frank Motek here. QC Kinetics is helping people every day right here and all across the country with their amazing non-surgical treatments that repair and restore damaged joint tissue. They use the latest advances in regenerative medicine, taking your own body's healing agents and concentrating them right in the area where you have that agonizing pain. This incredible non-invasive approach helps you take back control of your body, relieving the pain in your knees, hips, shoulders, your back. No invasive surgery, no harmful drugs or steroids, and no downtime. Summertime needs to be about having fun out there, making memories, golfing, hiking, going to the beach, enjoying the great outdoors. Take control now and start living pain-free again. Call QC Kinetics with locations in Glendale, the city of Orange, Mission Viejo, and now also in Costa Mesa. Call 213-997-PAIN. 213-997-PAIN. Again, that's 213-997-PAIN. 790 KBC welcomes Boney James for some smooth jazz coming to the Saban Theater. October 13th, tickets are on sale now at AXS.com. Right now, caller 9 wins at 1-888-795-222. You can get a pair of tickets to the show if you're caller 9. Call right now, 1-888-795-222 for Boney James. Coming to the Savant Theater October 13th. Yeah, we came, became a jazz station for just a second there, right? All right. Motac on Money continues here in 790 KBC. The Dow coming in for a closing gain of 27 points at 35,438. And, uh, yep, the Dow of 12 days in a row now, 12 trading days in a row. The S&P 500 of 13 at 4,567. And the NASDAQ of 86 at 14,144. Gold up more than $2 at 1,966.10 an ounce. Crude oil futures continue on a roll. Right now, uh, pulling back uh, 37 cents lower to 79.26, getting close to $80 a barrel during the trading session today. Shares of Pac West moving up 40% after Bank of California announced uh, they were buying up uh, Pac West in a, a big. Uh, Merger in the banking sector impacting Southern California. It looks like the combined bank will be based in Beverly Hills. Earnings, of course, also a big part of the action today. General Electric shares finishing up more than 6% after second quarter results from that aerospace and renewable energy company topped expectations. Verizon shares of nearly 1% after that company topped profit expectations. GM shares down 3.5% lower after GM delivered better than expected second quarter earnings and raised its guidance. Spotify shares tumbling more than 14% after the streaming giant easily surpassed subscriber growth expectations for its latest quarter but failed to sport upside on its key financials, according to MarketWatch. After the bell, Microsoft easily topping profit and revenue expectations for its latest quarter, though its shares were moving down about 3% in after-hours trading. In the cryptos, we see Bitcoin down about $30 now at $29,194. Ethereum down 6 at $18.55. And Doge. At eight cents, Raytheon tumbling 10% today. It's worst day in more than three years after that aerospace and defense giant said it needs to remove certain Pratt and Whitney jet engines from service for inspection. Motaka Money continues here on 790 KBC. We have some more information now about a big bank deal announced this afternoon Bank of California and PAC West. Bank Corp will merge in an all stock deal to create a bank with $36 billion in assets. That being announced this afternoon by both companies. They also raised $400 million in equity from investors, managed or advised by Warburg Pincus and Centerbridge Partners. According to Reuters, the combined bank will have about $25.3 billion in total loans in more than 70 branches here in California. It will be based here in the Los Angeles area and led by Bank of California CEO Jared Wolf, who previously served as PacWest General Counsel. Shares of PacWest plunged 27%, while Bank of California surged 10% after the Wall Street Journal reported news of this deal, citing people familiar with the situation. PacWest was among the lenders that was rocked by the collapse of three regional banks earlier this year, prompting the worst industry turmoil since the 2008 financial crisis. What's happening in the real estate world? Well, we're going to get a pretty important update now on what's happening especially on the high-end real estate world. One of the giants in the real estate world is Aaron Kerman, based in Beverly Hills. And Aaron, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us here. Uh, also star of uh, Listing Impossible. Thank you very much. It's been a while since we chatted behind live microphones. Aaron, thank you very much for taking the call. 
Of course. Thanks for having me. Give us an update on what's happening out there in the real world. Uh, you know, it's been a crazy couple of uh, months, actually. Uh, as you know, uh, obviously, the markets uh, took a major shift uh, from where they once were a year ago. And it happened overnight with, you know, obviously inflation, interest rates, and uh, all the good stuff. So it's definitely been a, a very fun, challenging, interesting marketplace. Very interesting. Of course, uh, you soar with the Eagles uh, out there. Uh, what, what are some of the properties uh, you're representing uh, at the moment? Right now, we have uh, amazing properties. We have a $150 million property in uh, Bel Air, gorgeous, modern, amazing views. Uh, we have what we call a castle on a hill. It's an $85 million property, 25,000 square feet. Uh, and then we have a lot of just amazing properties after that, uh, ranging in price from $5 million, going to 150, million, and some of the most trophy properties uh, in L.A. That is amazing. And what is entry level now in Beverly Hills, for example? Uh, you know, it depends where you are. Uh, you could get some nice condos for, you know, 2.5 mil. Uh, and then uh, it goes up from there. But uh, obviously Beverly Hills is super expensive uh, and, you know, one of the most, you know, world-class cities. Um, but, you know, and, you know, if you're north of, let's just say, say Santa Monica, a teardown house would cost you six million bucks right now. Uh, and uh, it goes up from there. So, you know, we have everything from the beautiful condos of two million up to $200 million palaces. Who's buying these days? Remember, I think when we last spoke, uh, Chinese buyers were, were a big factor, but that certainly has changed uh, over the years, right? Um, who's buying these places? You know what's really fun? Stacking Benjamins with Joe and his good friend OG not only has great financial insight, it's laid back with humor too. Mr. Len Penzo's here. Now when I buy something, I'm like, can I actually spend any time with this thing? Len, I would imagine you've got to think about that too when you're buying stuff. You know, before I was retired, if I wanted something, I bought it. I don't care what it was. The Kings were in the Stanley Cup Finals and me and the Honeybee, I yeah. mean, we, we didn't even think about it. 3600 bucks on two tickets. Now that I'm retired, those days are gone. <laughs> the Stacking Benjamins Show, available on YouTube or wherever you listen funny actually uh it was mostly american money driving american sales for the past five six years when was the last time we spoke how long was it it's been how a while long ago? i don't even remember funny, <laughs> funny enough i was just gonna say now you're chinese famous oh stop no funny enough the chinese are back so i was just uh telling somebody else uh we have not seen a lot of chinese money back but uh the last Probably seven showings I've done have all been Chinese. So they are back with a vengeance. That's very interesting. Wow. So they uh, had disappeared for a while, but uh, they are back now. Uh, and um, are these deals being financed or are these cash deals at, at these levels? Obviously, we've seen the mortgage rates come off of 20-year uh, highs the last year. The Fed is about to raise probably rates again by another quarter percentage point. Mm -hmm. So the, so the uh, short-term rates are, are going up. Um, how is this interest rate environment uh, impacting the, your uh, business? Uh, you know, it's definitely impacted the business. Uh, the luxury, for some reason, the luxury is actually taking a bigger hit than the uh, non-luxury. Um, we're seeing, and again, everything in LA is pretty luxury, it's obviously, but we're seeing right now, you know, everything between one and four million dollars is, is actually selling and selling pretty swift. Uh, when we get into the upper price ranges, 10 to 60, 70s, uh, we're definitely seeing a slowdown, and I think uh, people are kind of in a pause right now. Uh, people want to see where we're going. Um, obviously, with interest rates where they are, it's very expensive for people to move. And so we're seeing a lot of people pretty much uh, what, what I'm calling a frozen market. People aren't necessarily selling, so inventory is quite low. And uh, a lot of buyers are just kind of wa waiting and seeing. They want to see what's going to be happening. And they were hopeful interest rates are going to go down, although it doesn't look like that's happening this year. On the Your Live with celebrity real estate agent Aaron Kerman, and certainly the uh, the fact that Hollywood is, is completely shut down, has st that started to impact things? Are, are people starting to bail out? And um, what's the buzz uh, you're hearing among uh, the folks in the entertainment business about uh, the uh, WGA strike and SAG-AFTRA impacting things here at the moment? Yeah, it's it's definitely been impactful. Um, you know, if you are in the entertainment business, you are not buying homes right now. Uh, and uh, you're also on pause. Every, everyone's waiting to see what happens. The strike is obviously not good news for L.A., uh, but we're hopeful that it gets worked out and hopefully worked out soon, although it seems like there's some challenges there. All right, and the other thing impacting uh, L.A. real estate, this uh, measure ULA, the so-called uh, mansion tax, which is also 
put a very chilling effect uh, on uh, commercial real estate. Uh, do you handle uh, commercial deals as well? And what about this uh, impact of ULA, this uh, measure that was passed to to impose a tax on um, big transactions that supposedly uh, the money's supposed to be going to the homeless uh, and all that? Uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, you know, we're all for helping the homeless, obviously. Um, but, you know, Measure ULA was terrible for the real estate market. Uh, the way it was written, uh, it was written in a way that even if you're losing money, you still get charged that tax. Uh, they proposed or they thought that it was going to bring a lot of money into the, the city. But since that has passed, our market has also um, been quite slow. Uh, and sellers are just not willing to pay that kind of premium because at the end of the day, uh, if you're selling a house above $5 million and you have a 5% tax with closing costs and commissions, a seller is going to be selling at about 12%. So they're going to be minus 12% of cost before they even start, which is a huge number. And so um, that ULA has been um, really had a devastating blow on LA and uh, the high-end luxury market uh, and the commercial markets. And in a city that needs additional housing and transactions, um, it definitely was not the right play. Um, I hear, though, that uh, there will be a ruling on it uh, and its legality come September. So, you know, anybody that owns real estate, anybody that, you know, that, that, you know, has an impactful moment, we're all hoping that that, that gets reversed. Right. It is being challenged, and we're uh, eager to get some uh, ruling on that. So uh, and hopefully have a chance to speak with you again about all of that. And, and uh, obviously a lot of concern about what's happening with the commercial real estate. Are, are you seeing a, a move to uh, convert uh, office buildings to residential? Um, any other uh, trends that you're picking up here uh, in this area? I think they're already talking about that. Um, you know, I think San Francisco is an example of what we, what we do not want to have happen here. Uh, and so I think uh, everyone's watching very closely and seeing what's going to happen. Uh, thank God we're not there yet. Uh, and, um, you know, everyone's kind of watching the markets. But but I think that there will be a lot of conversion. And this is not just in L.A. I think it's going to be all over America. Um, I think a lot of the, uh, you know, since COVID, obviously, the way people work and where they work is now different. And I think the downtowns, as we do them, do need some uh, some thought behind what's going to be new, possibly turning them into residential and uh, mixed-use spaces. All right. For anyone that wants to connect with you, I think you've changed firms since we last spoke. Uh, what's the best way to connect with you? Uh, uh, yeah, we moved. Uh, we opened the uh, Christie's International Real Estate brand here in Los Angeles, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, I'm easy to get connected to. So it's uh, Aaron at AaronKerman.com or I'm on Instagram and it's just my name. Terrific, Aaron. And you're big uh, on the socials, of course. Aaron Kerman, real estate agent extraordinaire, live with us here tonight. Aaron, great to reconnect with you. Hope to uh, get your views from time to time. And uh, we wish you all the best. And thank you very much for taking the call here this evening. Thanks so much. You're too kind, and I'll talk to you real soon. Thanks a million. Thank you very much, Aaron Kerman, live with us here on Motec on Money on 790 KBC. Folks, it's jarring to have a car accident and hard to think clearly when you're hit. So my friend, attorney Clark Fielding of Fielding Law has created something to help you. It's a guide called Be Prepared Before a Motor Vehicle Accident. The guide is one page, fits right there in your glove compartment, and gives you everything you need in case you're hurt in an accident. Go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com and download your free one-page guide and keep it right there in the glove box. Put Clark's number in your phone, too, under the word accident. So all you have to do is hit the number when you need him. Tell your family and friends to do the same. So if you're hurt in an accident, call the one we all trust, Attorney Clark Fielding. The number to call, 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK, 833-88-SHARK. And download the Be Prepared Before a Motor Vehicle Accident. That's the new guide at ClarkTheSharkLaw.com, ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Motega Money continues here on 790 KBC. The hot labor summer continues. Add Kaiser Permanente to the tally. Healthcare workers there are set to hit the picket lines tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. This coming as workers have been without contracts, which expired three months ago. Employees say they are short-staffed, and the crisis is impacting patients and caregivers. So that's the latest on the labor front. Earlier today, UPS reached a tentative deal with its 340000 Person Teamsters Union potentially averting a strike there, the threat to disrupt package deliveries for millions of businesses and households worldwide. An ongoing strike by Southern California hotel workers hitting more hotels in the area. Workers at 43 hotels have now participated in the strike so far, according to the union. Unite here, Local 11, representing some 60 hotels in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. And of course, in Hollywood, 
The Writers Guild strike and the sag after strike uh, continue. More than 350 publicists representing the biggest stars in Hollywood grilled sag after leadership today about the ongoing strike. Numerous participants telling Variety the wide-ranging um, meeting on Zoom covered topics, including the upcoming fall film festivals and more uh, matters such as how small town and PR firms expect to survive when their clients are forbidden to do any press at this point. Following all of these developments very, very closely, is a giant himself on the local business scene, the former chairman of the Los Angeles County Business Federation, LA BizFed, former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business and chairman of employers group, Mark Wilbur, live with us on the air now. Mark Wilbur, thank you very much uh, for taking the call here. It's also been a while now since we've chatted behind live microphones. A lot going on here. Give us your assessment of what's happening uh, on the labor front here. Great to be on, Frank. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, there's just a lot going on. I was thankful to hear the UPS uh, was averted, um, and that, that got through today. That was great news, I think, for everybody, because that, that impacts so many supply chains in so many ways that that would really have a, a significant national uh, impact, not just uh, local. Uh, you know, and then, you, you know, the hotel issue, it, it's interesting. The, the problem that that union's having is that there are too many choices in California. Lots of, you know, uh, replacement hotels to go and stay at, other places to go to. They're not on the front page anymore. Uh, it's noise on the side room. So they're just not, you know, getting that kind of pressure. And they're kind of in a quandary right now because you got to ask yourself how long you're going to keep pushing these people uh, without any pay and things like that. And, of course, they always come in and want to get back pay and everything else. But at the end of the day, people want their rent. People need to eat. People have kids to take care of and things like that. So uh, it, it's really um, that one. Uh, that one's a 50-50 bet as to whether or not it's going to have any impact at all at the end of the day. And I'm kind of concerned about all those folks that are being impacted by that. Certainly, I'm going to be soft, Frank, but the Kaiser is going on strike tomorrow morning. I, I mean, a lot of people, it's one of these stories that's kind of under the radar with the UPS announcement today. But, you know, Kaiser, that's a huge system, a medical system. And they've been going for three months without a contract and still showing up to work and doing their thing. I'd like to see those people come to the table and get their act together. That just seems kind of dumb to me, to be honest. That is big, and uh, that'll be big news uh, first thing in the morning when um, Kaiser Permanente health care workers hit the uh, the picket lines uh, at 6 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. And, of course, uh, yeah. very visible uh, in Hollywood right now in front of all the major studios. Uh, you see the Writers Guild and and sag Aftrin's uh, on strike. Uh, Annette Benning was on the picket line um, driving by uh, Netflix today. I, I saw her on uh, Sunset Boulevard uh, doing an yeah. interview. And so uh, some of the biggest names in Hollywood now uh, joining in to support uh, what's happening there. Um, Hollywood basically shut down. Uh, how do you expect yeah. this to play out, sir? Well, you know, sag after is kind of an interesting situation because, you know, you, you have all these A-listers that are getting on TV and, you know, and, and, um, singing from the hymnal about all this stuff. And, and while I appreciate that because they're recognized, and behind the scenes, what people don't understand is that these A-listers and the studios are getting production exemptions to continue productions on certain movies uh, and certain things that are underway. So, you know, I'd like to hear a better explanation of that because I, I think, you know, if you're unemployed, you're on the picket line, but, you know, A-lister goes back and is getting, you know, paid – uh, because they got an exemption to continue their production. I think that's an issue. The thing I'm most worried about is that, you know, I think over the last couple of years, we've seen the expansion of the number of people included in productions. Instead of having three or four, um, you know, top actors, there's like a lot more people involved in a lot of the productions. But what's going to happen is that, you know, eventually this will get settled, and then it's going to be impacted through, you know, hiring less expensive writers. It's going to be, you know, impacted through hiring less actors in a production, you know, writing writing uh, roles out of production, basically. Because you know, the studios are still going to make their money. If you think they're not going to make their money, I got news for you. You know, it's been in business for, you know, 100 years, and they've got that down to a science. So, you know, that's my concern is that, you know, you got to be careful about how far you push this process because you're going to hurt again same as the hotels, you're hurting people that really can't afford to be hurt. The A-lister goes back to their compound, you know, with their, you know, huge walls around their house and, you know, all the food and, and energy that they have uh, to be able to do whatever they want. But that person who's got one or two roles a year, 
can't really afford that, Frank. And you and I both know that. We see that impact here in Los Angeles. And so I, I'm concerned about that. But, you know, then I understand there's also international exemptions going on where some of the productions are going on. Um, and when they're outside the country, there's uh, special exemptions that can go. So I just, you know, it's one of these things. It's a big mess. I, I really would love to see him get it settled. My yep. understanding is they are far apart right now and not coming to a decision uh, anytime soon. Mark, thank you very much for that assessment. And we look forward to uh, speaking with you again many more times on all of this. That is uh, Mark Wilbur, the former chair of the L.A. County Business Federation, L.A. BizFed, current chairman of Employers Group and former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business. This is Motac on Money on 790 KBC. Coming up next, the KBC News Blitz, tonight hosted by the one and only Dennis Zine, the Honorable Dennis Zine, former L.A. City Council member, former LAPD sergeant and current LAPD reserve officer. Coming up next right here on 790 KBC.